American newspapers and magazines can still be bought, and cannabis is openly on sale in the market. Vientiane still retains its attraction for young Western hippies, and despite a desire for discipline, the government hasn't yet moved against them. But among the ubiquitous American T-shirts, there are now some with a more nationalistic message. America was to have played a vital role in the reconstruction of Laos, but the aid well, program has now been cancelled. In his last interview before he resigned, Prince Suvana Puma expressed his dissatisfaction with this state American of affairs. Je ne peux que déplorer cette position des États-Unis. I can only deplore the American attitude, he told us. In the Paris Agreement, they promised to heal the wounds of the war in Vietnam and in China, and I very much regret they didn't keep the promises they made us. The Americans have cancelled projects already started and all credits have been stopped. I find that very mean Laos is now receiving substantial aid from uh, China and from uh, the Soviet Union. What, what role do these two countries play in Laos? We ask des amitiés à la Chine et à l'Union soviétique. Nous ne pouvons pas nous permettre de nous immiscer dans leur querelle si le querelle existe entre les grandes puissances. Ce que nous demandons, what we want is for them to protect Laos and preserve its neutral status, as they agreed to do in Geneva in 1962. We want to live in peace with them, and we really hope that Peking and Moscow will reach an understanding. In fact, the Laotians are looking much more towards Moscow than Peking. Aeroflot, the Soviet state airline, has always been here, but now Russian pilots have taken over most of Laos's internal air services. Russian is heard almost as often as French in the shops of Vientiane. Soviet advisors, like their American counterparts before them, are usually big people, physically as well as politically, and their presence is obvious enough alongside the slightly built Laotians, which makes their attempts to avoid being noticed rather a waste of time. About 800 Soviet advisors are presently in Vientiane, and reinforcements arrive every month. American cars left behind from the days of American aid are put at their disposal. But despite Soviet aid, self-reliance is the watchword of the new regime. Posters exhorting the people to greater efforts are going up all over the capital. One example of self-reliance in action. The garden of the former American aid compound in Vientiane turned over to the cultivation of vegetables. Patat Lao cadres help the townspeople to prepare the stony ground. It's a similar story in the countryside, although the economy here is so primitive it's hardly been affected by the events of the last six months. In fact, the self-help philosophy has received a tremendous boost from Thailand's action in closing the border. The government on its own could never have demonstrated so convincingly that Laos needs to be economically independent. So the closure has consolidated popular support for the revolution. The restraint shown by Laos's new masters in political affairs is also applied to religion. Even in the old government, the minister responsible for religious affairs was a communist. The new regime has deliberately tried to enlist the support of the country's Buddhist leaders, 
who've been promised complete freedom to carry on their usual activities. The courtyards of many temples serve as playgrounds for children and as meeting places for their local communities. The government has asked the monks to serve as teachers in the regular schools, and some Buddhist leaders see this as an opportunity to strengthen their influence. The monks are also being encouraged to grow their own vegetables as part of the national self-help program, and a whole series of small allotments have blossomed along the banks of the Mekong. It's a shrewd move by the Patat Lao because it identifies the country's religious leaders with the government's national aims and so bolsters the communists' authority. It's been clear for many years that Laotians couldn't hope to regain their ancient prosperity without first learning to live in peace with each other and then working together for a common good. Both these conditions now seem to prevail. The new prime minister has said he wants to get rid of the old corruption, integrate the long neglected minorities and create a truly national consciousness. But he's also made it clear that the first aim will be self-sufficiency in food. The Laotians, it seems, are going to have their revolution, but they're going to have to work for it.